Welcome to another new features tutorial. As you can read in the slate, what we're going to cover here is how to set up bombs, uh, more specifically how we can time bombs and how we can use more than one bomb uh, in a destruction sim. In this first part of the tutorial, we will use volumes to specify which area will be blown away. In a second tutorial, uh, we will use painted maps so you can paint exactly which areas that you want to be affected by the bomb. This tutorial is actually a response to a question that we had on the forum um, and if we go to the forum uh, Craig already made a very elaborate uh, visual tutorial or a tutorial on the forum with screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions and how to tweak it and so on um, and this is actually a video version of that tutorial uh, although this tutorial covers more as you can see the the painted maps which like I said is the second part of this tutorial uh, what I'm gonna show first because it is a little bit simpler is instead of using painted maps to achieve this kind of result um, we are gonna use volumes um, so let's uh, let's have a look how we would set that up. So what I have here is a part of the shot that we've been using of the assets that we've been using for the tutorials uh, as of late. Uh, what I will do is we're going to use this piece of geometry here and we're going to use the right side and the left side and we're going to attach two bombs to it. One uh, to blow away a section uh, of this of this asset in this direction or wherever we feel like and then this part secondly and we're gonna time it so for example the right part blows off at f frame 5 uh, and the left side blows off at frame 10 and like I said we're gonna use volumes to actually get control over which part of the asset will get affected so what I have here I've already set it up uh, as you can see I have a break geo node so my geometry is already uh, broken uh, or set up to be broken. Uh, I've changed some stuff in the globals. You know, you should be quite familiar with that right now uh, or already. If you're not, just go to the tutorials on the website and we have tutorials from very basic to rather advanced stuff that you can uh, check. So, first things first, let's set up an event that actually fractures just this geometry. Uh, I'm going to use a pre canned effect uh, event, sorry, I'm going to use the bomb and then I'm just going to delete stuff. So I'm going to delete the object filter, uh, I'm going to delete the time filter because we're going to use that uh, later uh, in the other events with the bombs in it. Um, then I'm going, to I'm going to set the trigger to once because we just want it to be once, uh, once fractured uh, in this case. Um, and then I'm going to delete the push modifier. Okay. So what we have now is, as you can see, nothing happens but the geometry is broken and you will see that if I hide the polygons that we you know this is the, the the right color is being passed or this means you know if your mesh you haven't figured that one out yet if your event evaluates as true meaning if everything is working then this color will be given um, to to your mesh so that that is good that is you know very simple stuff let's just rename this event let's call it break now let's set up the bombs using the volumes so let's go to animate it and let's create uh, activate in volume um, again I'm going to delete the volume filter here because I'm going to use it in the modifier stack so I'm going to delete it here um, that should do it and then in the modifier stack I'm going to use order this a bit let's just call this one right like that uh, in the modifier stack I'm gonna add a filter to the activation so I'll show you what that does in a bit so I'm gonna use a volume right here I'm gonna change it to in this case a sphere but and as you probably have seen the volume or the activation volume tutorials uh, you can use a mesh that you create yourself it can be deforming uh, you know, if you wanted to create a mesh like a sphere or a character or whatever, you can set it to mesh here and then you will be able to connect, uh, select the mesh that you have and connect it. But just for simplicity reasons, we're just going to use a sphere. So let's say that your 
supervisor or director or whatever says, okay, when well, I want this piece to be blown off, but I only want this front piece to be blown off, this here. Okay. So let's set that up like that and move that down a bit. Okay. So if we would play this right now, uh, we we don't we don't don't have the bomb yet, but we can actually see that it's working. You can see that what is inside the volume is uh, is being activated, or the fragments that are inside the volume are being activated. So we can see that that is working. Now, actually, the only thing that we have to do is we have to add a push modifier, which is a bomb. Um, just reorder this a little bit here, and let's use a cone. So we can give it a little bit of direction. Let's move that up. Let's move the fragments that we want to be blown out inside that cone. Like so. Uh, let's give it about a hundred. Might be a bit much. Let's give it a color. So we kind of have, like we have the past color here. Uh, we can give the fragments, fragments that are being uh, affected by the bomb a color as well. So just to make sure that everything is working, let's give it... Um, white why not and let's have a look oh yes we wanted to make time bombs so in here I'm actually gonna create uh, a time filter and let's say at frame 5 we want this bomb to become active so see now at 5 this is already a good sign you can see that it's becoming white because that is the color for the bomb and you can see that they're being blown out, blown out right now Maybe a hundred is a bit much. Is it thirty? And if we play this, there we go. Take a little bit more frames. There we go. So now let's set up another bomb, second bomb at a different time. So let's do this on the left side. So we're just going to create exactly the same event. We're going to animate event, activate within volume. So we're going to delete the volume filter again. We're going to use a time filter and we're going to say we want this bomb to be activated at frame 10. Same thing. I'm going to add a filter. Uh, volume. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's create a sphere. And let's select the sphere. Move it up a bit. And in this case, let's blow this whole thing off here. And just sphere a little bit smaller move this up or you know what let's just say that they want just the top part of this blown off here also in the same direction okay so add a modifier let's add um, a push modifier and again let's set it to a cone let's move it up like So, okay, and let's use that same color, use it 30, and we get it on frame 10. That's good. So, let's see if that's working. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is we have two bombs, each going off at a separate time, uh, five, frame 5 and frame 10. And, you know, we're using volumes to specify which fragments or which area of the asset that we want to be uh, blown away. Now, the cool thing about this is obviously this completely procedure. Let's say that you get nodes back and they say, oh, we changed our mind. Uh, that never happens, of course. We changed our mind and um, we want this whole structure to be blown off. And you'll see like, okay, let's move that over there. And they say, well, over here, we just want the utter or the complete left side of it, like so. Okay. Um, and as much as that, there we go. Now, one thing that I want to say is that um, in, in the volume filter, what we can do is, you can see here we have control over center and points. Now, what that does is... Um, whether you th this will affect how the fragments uh, will be added to the volume or which fragments uh, will be added to the volume if you set it to center 
the volume will take into account the center of mass of the fragment and only fragments that have their center of mass inside the volume will actually be added to the volume now if you set it to points that means that whenever a vertex uh, is inside the volume that means that that fragment will be inside the volume so if you want like in here you want a little bit more fine control uh, meaning that as soon as a fragment actually hits uh, or is inside, as soon, sorry, as soon as a vertex of a fragment is inside the volume, then it will be uh, considered to be inside the volume. So you can get more precise um, results if you set this to points. Maybe in some cases it doesn't matter, in other cases it does matter. So you can see here obviously that there is a difference. If you lay that one out, you can see that a lot of the fragments here get blown away while if I set it back to center of mass you see that you know less gets added to the volume because it's actually the center of mass that's being used instead of uh, the vertex so yeah that's it really uh, so like I said in the next tutorial we'll be do we will be doing a very similar thing but instead of using uh, volumes we will be using painted textures thank you and have a good day